Coming up on Ignition GT, we blow away the cobwebs in two awe-inspiring Super Trofeo races. The GT team spends a week with the updated Kia Sportage. Driving it on the highway, I felt like it was a really punchy and sure-footed car. And we do a 10-year challenge all of our own. I'm happy to admit that I was, that I was wrong. Did I just say that? <laughs> this could come you back. will never hear that again, <laughs> ever! The 2019 season of the highly popular GNH Transport Extreme Supercar Series kicks off this coming weekend at Swakops Raceway, just outside Pretoria. Now these races draw some of the biggest crowds seen at local circuits, and if you've heard and seen these cars in action, you'll know why. But on Ignition GT, we want to do more than just look and listen to cars. First and foremost, <laughs> we want to drive them. Best I grab my helmets and gloves. Local motor racing needed a serious overall, and the Extreme Festival race days did just that, providing fantastic entertainment for the whole family on and off the track. Headlining the race days is the GNH Transport Extreme Supercars, which since 2012 has thrilled spectators with the hottest machines battling it out. Ferrari, Porsche, Aston Martin, KTM, BMW, Mercedes-Benz, and most recently Lamborghini. These high-end GT and high-performance saloon cars compete in six time-based classes and are seriously fast, with the Class A Plus and GT3 cars lapping the 2.4km Swartkop circuit in under 61 seconds. That is extreme. They look great and sound even better. What's not to love? And with just a few days to go until the opening round of the season here at Swartkops, we thought we'd check out a new car on the grid. boys I know really well, Ricky and Johnny and their dad, Jimmy, were the first guys to put me in a, in a race car, introduce me to the sport, so there will always be a special connection with you guys, but in those days, it was all BMW, you are like the BMW boys of Safkin Racing, but now we're in Lamborghinis, what made the change? Uh, you know, Marius, I think it comes with a long, uh, a long line of racing, you know, I think we've, we did all we could in a privateer BMW, you know, we built it up from scratch, um, and you know, I think we just hit a limit. You know, there's only a certain amount that you can do in a road car made into a race car. At the end of the day, if you want to run with the big boys, um, you've got to get something exotic. You know, last year I sat down with Ricky and we spoke and we, we kind of saw where purpose-built race cars were going in this country and we decided to follow suit. And you know, I spoke to Ricky, Ricky said initially he wanted a Porsche and then a mate of ours found these two cars in, in the Czech Republic and said, what about Lamborghinis? And Lamborghini is basically a poster car. Everyone's got one as in some stage of their life on their wall. Manufactured from 2003 to 2013, the Gallardo is Lamborghini's best-selling model with over 14,000 units produced. Powered by their glorious naturally aspirated V10 engine, dynamic supercar proportions and driving dynamics, Lamborghini's racing division or Squadra Corsa had a fabulous base to work from. In May 2009, Lamborghini introduced their Blanc Pan Super Trofeo Series, the fastest one-make series in the world. The series is contested in Europe, North America, Asia and the Middle East. The LP564 chassis is reworked and the odd-firing 5.2-litre V10 gets a higher compression ratio, but is restricted to 570 horsepower or in SA terms 419 kilowatts, and it comes fitted with their e-gear 6-speed transmission with paddles. With an FIA homologated roll cage, carbon body panels and dramatic bodywork and aero package, this racing bull weighs in at just 1,300 kilograms. That's nearly 300 kgs lighter than its road-going version. Jani's car is fitted with Olin's GT3 four-way adjustable shocks and lightweight single-nut BBS rims which run on Pirelli slicks. And then of course there are the brakes. Six-pot GT3 Brembo racing brakes with 378mm discs all round. This is the real deal. What do you enjoy about racing in the series from a driving perspective? I think from a driving perspective it's the, you know, it, it's been able to battle it out with Porsches, Ferraris, uh, Lambos and I think it's just the spectators like it and from us we like to have the spectators here I mean we drive with some of the best drivers in the country and uh, what's better than the best drivers or the best equipment it's obviously the best series can we stop talking cars can we start driving yeah let's go for it Oh, the 
these cars look and just sound so amazing. So as you can imagine, I literally was chomping at the bit to get behind the wheel of a thoroughbred Italian race car. As it would turn out, a little bit too exuberant. My time behind the wheel, sadly, way too short. Everyone is so excited about their 10 year challenge. Me, not so much. 10 years of test driving cars of all varieties on Ignition GT and this is, uh, this is my first time that I've damaged one and um, for it to be a mate car and a race car just before a race weekend is, is less than ideal. I wanted to be raving about how amazing this Gallardo Super Trofeo is to drive. The two or three corners we got to sample, it felt really good. I love the mechanical sound of a race car. You know, this thing means business. And obviously being on full slicks just feels so good. It's been a while since we've been on those. Super, super direct on the steering, but we were literally just getting up to speed and um, I made a very rookie mistake. Um, because this is all FIA approved, the steering wheel actually has a release clip that you've got to pull to mount the wheel. Uh, I didn't do that. I popped the wheel on, it clicked, I thought it was on and um, ended up with the wheel in my hand. Well fortunately it was a low speed crash so there was no mechanical damage and the GNH transport team did a fantastic job getting the Lambo looking super trofeo in no time. Well, you can catch Gianni and Ricky and the Lambos in action this weekend at the opening round of the GNH Transport Extreme Supercars at Swakops. Go on and support the guys. After the break, it's back to reality as we round up the week's biggest automotive newsmakers. From the Kia brand, this has to be one of my favorite cars that they are making. And later on, we do a 10 year challenge Ignition GT style. I've got to have stuff for my hair dryers, makeup, appliances, all that <laughs> sort of stuff that I need to groom myself as a man. Yeah, all right. Let's talk about the car. So this is the newly updated Sportage and I think from the Kia brand this has to be one of my favourite cars that they are making. From a styling point of view, um, there's not too many changes, notable changes. New bumper, new fog light clusters etc. But otherwise it's pretty much the same Sportage. But if you ask me, it really didn't need an update to begin with. I still think even though it's a couple of years old now, it's still one of the best looking compact SUVs on the market. There's actually a lot to like about the Sportage, especially this particular derivative that we have. For one, and this might sound a little bit strange, it has high profile tires. Nowadays, everyone is obsessed with low profile tires, but what does that mean? It ruins the ride quality and they are especially vulnerable on bad roads. We have the two liter diesel Ignite Plus two wheel drive auto. The engine is fantastic. It's a two liter turbo diesel unit producing 131 kilowatts and 400 newton meters, and that is more than ample. Driving it on the highway, I felt like it was a really punchy and sure fitted car. It's really compliant. Um, it's got that boost of energy that you need. And super refined. Initially, when I got into the car, I didn't even realize that it was a diesel until I wound down the window and I could hear a little bit of that diesel clatter. The 8-speed automatic transition does let the package down somewhat. It is a bit slow to respond, particularly when down changing, and you do notice quite a bit of lag. On the inside, well, the Sportage is very big on space. Great rear leg room, 466 litres in the boot, so more than ample. There's some really nice touches inside in terms of storage and functionality. I feel like maybe had they put in a touch screen, even in the lower entry level, it would have given it a better value proposition. It is sparsely equipped, to be quite honest. Um, touch screen would have been nice, electronic handbrake would have been nice, keyless entry and keyless start would have been nice. And then there are small things. For instance, on the front door panels, the armrests are made of a very hard plastic. So if you're driving long distance, it does become a little bit uncomfortable after a while if you're resting your elbow. To wrap up, the Sportage that we have here in this spec is 460 odd thousand rand. 
And that to me represents really great value for money. Um, it's big on space, big on power. If you can stretch your budget to one of the better spec cars, I think I would just for a NASA interior. Otherwise, there's really not much to fault on the Sportage and it really is worth considering if you're shopping for a compact SUV. Nasser Alataya and the Toyota Gazoo racing team finally clinched the Dakar victory that has eluded them for the last seven years. Together with co-driver Matthew Bummel, the Qatari piloted the South African-built Hilux to a convincing win, beating Nani Roma in the Mini Countryman by more than 46 minutes. Back home, the team members were treated to a hero's welcome at Toyota's headquarters in Santon. There's no question that in the, uh, the motorsport world and more, that Dakar is the world's toughest race. It is extremely long, you know, this year's one was 10 days solid in, in unknown terrain. From uh, day five, uh, we believe uh, we are really uh, close to, to win this Dakar with the, with the Toyota for the first time, you know. But uh, we worked very, very hard the uh, last five days. Yes, uh, the, the scary feeling, it was the last day because, you know, the last day, uh, 112 kilometer. For me, it was like 1,000 kilometer, you know. Next week, we will be bringing you an in-depth look at Toyota's first ever Dakar win, so be sure not to miss out on that. And finally, on a more somber note, 2018 was a tough financial year for most, and as we reflect on the latest figures from the National Association of Automobile Manufacturers of South Africa, it's clear to see that consumers continue to tighten their belts. December, traditionally a good month for those in the business of selling cars, saw 39,984 vehicles sold, a drop of almost 2% compared to the same month in 2017. Toyota South Africa ended 2018 with a bang, with combined sales for the year showing a 4.5% increase over 2017. Mahindra continued its penetration of the South African market with the highest monthly sales ever in December, growing by 26%. Not to be outdone, Suzuki sold 12,123 units in the last calendar year and grew by well over 30%. At least for some, the proverbial dark cloud had a silver lining. And despite the increase in global political uncertainty, NAMSA projects a 1% growth in total sales for 2019. For the past couple of weeks, the social media sphere has been dominated by the so-called 10-year challenge. And in keeping with the times, we've decided to present you with our very own. And that's coming up after the break. So I'm just trying to understand though, because this is still Ignition GT, which is a motoring show. So I don't care about shoes, I care about cars, and in particular the C30 that we're driving at the moment. So help me understand how this all fits in. long-termers, which is a car that they assess over a longer period. We at Ignition GT all own our own cars, so we decided that we'd get a long distancer instead, and we've got ourselves the Volvo C30 T5 R Design Edition, and it is awesome. We've just driven all the way to Durban, because Marius has just moved here, just arrived in Schlange, and uh, we're hoping that with our new TomTom Tom White Pearl, which is fabulous because it tells you all the girly stuff like where to shop and where to be seen, we can teach him a thing or two about his, uh, his new hometown. Lindsay Vine, this is not the go-karting rooftop gateway, it's a flinking shoe store. I know it is. I know it is. It's not a, any old shoe store though. This is Nine West. Yeah, I and, am. Well, obviously I don't know Durban that well. And so I got myself a little tom-tom, a ladies tom-tom called the White Pearl to, to come all the way here. And it's got all these shoe stores. <laughs> Nine West being one of them. So I, I'm just trying to understand though, because 
this is still Ignition GT, which is a motoring show. So I don't care about shoes, I care about cars, and in particular the C30 that we're driving at the moment. So it helped me understand in my pea brain how this all fits in. I'll tell you exactly what it has to do with it, Please. apart from the fact that it's a beautiful car, yeah. gorgeous. Um, that car, okay, Nine West doesn't have shoes for men in it, not the store anyway. Like the C30, some people might say that's a, a lady's car, but actually, I think it's all about style. And that car, for the metrosexual man who wants to be well healed, I think it's, uh, yeah, there's a loose connection. <laughs> I suppose, especially with, especially with our design, it certainly does look a bit more masculine. But it's quite funny, I mean, being a Scandinavian uh, vehicle, Scandinavia has always been known for its design. Uh, they've got amazing stores like Menu, and then you look at Volvos of the past, were always like a box for a family with 2.5 kids. Exactly. It was just so, but that's changed. It was always the picket fence car, and it's not like that anymore. I mean, the C30 T5 with our design is definitely your up and coming uh, singleton in the city kind of car. So, am I getting a makeover as well? Do you need one? <laughs> The C30 is a great option for long distance driving in South Africa. It has all the safety that Volvo has become famous for. And a new iteration of this very car, unveiled at Frankfurt, will feature an even sportier chassis, which Volvo says is an additional bonus for safety because it prompts a more alert feeling at the wheel. I thought there's no ways the two of us and Jonathan and all the gear and cameras were going to fit in the C30. Yeah, especially when you brought an extra bag. Now, hang on, now. you can't now tell me I need to go the whole metrosexual thing and now I can't have two bags. I've got to have stuff for my hair dryers, makeup, appliances, all that <laughs> sort of stuff that I need to groom myself as a man. Yeah, all right. Let's talk about the car. Uh, I'm Literally. loving this car, I have to say. I know, it looks like you've fallen in love again. <laughs> well, not no, no. No one comes close to the Type R, but I do like this car a lot. It's got a very solid feel to drive. It's got plenty of power. And it's very luxurious as well. I think it that's is. what I've enjoyed. You yeah. know, I've been sitting in the back, which is something I haven't done in a long time. <laughs> so the back car, and, uh, I, had, I had leg room, but the seats were very comfortable. Um, and, and everything yeah, you is... said you didn't think there'd be enough space in the back. No, I, I, you didn't, I didn't like those individual seats. No, I didn't, and uh, I'm, ha I'm happy to admit that I was that I was wrong. Did I just say that? <laughs> this could come you back. You will never hear that again, <laughs> ever. <laughs> this could come back to bite me. What do you think? Whole metrosexual look, I've shaved, I'm even wearing a pink shirt. It's a good start, it is a good start, but I have to say that fat cook's not going to help you <laughs> any. Although, the lovely, pretty, frilly green tablecloth, it will help. Yeah, this is this is original farm store life, isn't it? The Dragon's Cave. Ginger beer, fat cook, it's perfect. Mm. And I've done this Durban Joburg trip so many times, but always on the N3. Now with TomTom, -Tom, we're getting to see some pretty cool old roads and uh, the sea that he's enjoying them. Indeed, we took the Bergville, Colenso or Framp and we went through the beautiful little town of Winterton. Did you blink? <laughs> I did blink and missed the speed camera right as you get into the town. Well, at least you get a nice little photo reminder when you get <laughs> home in the post, eh? Indeed, we are in the speed camera capital of the world, KZN. But TomTom -Tom does notice that, so it gives us warning. Anyway, we've just stopped for a quick bite before we head up to um, Olafir's Hook Pass, which is a beautiful pass, you'll love it. One, two, three, four. I think that the type of person that's going to buy this, whether it's a guy or a girl, is really going to be somebody who's got an attention to detail and likes something different. Because uh, that's what it is. It isn't your Audi, it isn't your, your VW. No. But when you're talking the T5, with our design on it, it's all about racing. It is. 169 kilowatts, that's plenty of the 2.5 liter turbocharged engine. I can see why in Sweden they would actually race these. Compact, uh, very firm suspension, but easy on the drive. So yeah. it does absorb all the, all the bumps and things on the road. But yeah. from a handling point of view, it's, it's really precise. It's I know awesome. we in the we in the automatic, but um, the reaction. It's a when, smooth when, box, yeah. Yeah, when it drops down, it's uh, mm. it's been very impressive. Still, even with our design, they haven't sold many of these C30s. 
hasn't been a big seller at all. Um, and I believe resale is not great either. I think that's where the beauty is. I think if people actually give Volvo a try and try something different, mm. get into the vehicle, they are going to be pleasantly surprised. I think it is just the typical South African stereotype that if it's not German, if it's not what everybody else is driving on yeah. the road, uh, you're not going to try it. Yeah. Anything it says that you're intelligent. Yes. If you look at it, it's almost like <laughs> it's almost like you know I've got a keen eye for design. I know where I'm going. I'm I'm civilized, but I still like to have my fun. The route from Durban back to Josie can be somewhat tedious, especially if you've got a passenger waffling on next to you, and expensive with all those toll roads. If you're behind the wheel of a sporty performer that begs to have its legs stretched, but also wants some corners to cozy up to, the Olafus Hook Pass is definitely worth a try. Well, as you can probably tell, a lot has changed at Ignition. Lindsay got married and has two kids now, and I've moved from Durban back to Port Elizabeth, and the sexy C30, well, sadly, that is no more. But as they say, you know, the more things change, the more they do stay the same, and we at Ignition still bring you the hottest automotive content, which is exactly what we'll be doing next week when we drive the updated Kia Sorento. The GT team gets better acquainted with the Mahindra KUV 100 NXT. And we chat to members of the Toyota Gazoo racing team to find out more about the 2019 Dakar Rally. But until next time, please buckle up and drive safely. See you then.